r slash no sleep posted by you slash born beach my grandma died and passed down her secluded cabin in the woods to my brother and i to us though it's filled with old nightmares part one my grandmother passed away last month but nobody found her corpse until a week ago hazards of living out in the mountains i suppose my uncle couldn't believe it he'd been driving her groceries and supplies once a month and according to the coroner's report she died a day after he'd left what are the chances to hear him tell it she was just fine when he'd driven away too spry as she'd ever been she was even getting her own water from the river and doing a bit of fishing on the side and then poof deceased griff her golden retriever was gone now too my uncle thought he probably took off after realizing grandma wasn't waking up maybe got hungry and went off chasing squirrels in the woods or something my uncle strolled about and called Griff's name for hours after he'd found grandma, looking in all his usual hiding spots, but had no luck. My opinion? Griff probably got as far away as he could. After the funeral my brother and I offered to come up and help our uncle clean up her things. Or at least my brother did, and I got guilt tripped along for the ride. Apparently she left the cabin to the two of us in her will. Split custody, not that either of us wanted it. We'd more than had our fill of memories out there. That said, it was a nice day to tidy up a dead woman's things. The summer sun shone bright and there wasn't so much as a cloud in the sky. Overhead, sparrows darted between the towering pine trees, flitting around the cabin's small clearing while they sang their bird song. I'm gonna bring this stuff down the mountain and head in for the night, Uncle Jake said, gesturing to his pickup truck full of grandma's furniture. You two gonna take off soon? Or spend the night? He looked like the spitting image of a mountain man, standing there with his tree trunk arms and red flannel shirt. The beard was the cherry on top. We'll be heading out soon, I said. Don't worry about us, the car got us up here just fine, it'll get us back down. Uncle Jake was suspicious of any vehicle that didn't have a cargo bed. Sure thing, boys. Take it easy now. He hopped into the cab of the pickup and slammed the door with a metal clang. A moment later, the engine turned over and the mountain air was replaced with the thick smell of diesel and rust. With a rumble, the truck rolled out of the cabin's dirt driveway bobbed down the makeshift road and disappeared to the faint rifts of ACDC's thunderstruck. Stay the night, my brother Eric said, snickering. As if we'd spend a night in this hellhole. Eric was tall and lanky, poor of eyesight and blindingly pale. He pulled his thick glasses from his face and wiped the lenses clean on his Marvel t-shirt. I say we finish these last couple boxes and follow him down. He peered up through the pine trees overhead, where the sun was beginning its slow descent into the evening. We're a few hours from dark yet, but I want to be far from these woods when the lights go out. He shot me a knowing wink. I walked up the creaking wooden porch and pulled the thick door open. Then stop looking at your phone every five minutes and help me get this shit done. I stepped inside, leaving the door to swing in the breeze. Help me get this shit done, he repeated in a mocking tone, following me inside. I'm just trying to get in touch with dad. He still hasn't answered my texts. Maybe that's because we don't have any service out here. I meant since the funeral. The dude's been a total recluse since mom died. Yeah, well I could care less. The guy's a complete asshole anyway. I crouched down in front of a bookshelf and began pulling out dusty tomes, filling my arms with as many as I could manage. He's still our dad, Eric argued. Now that grandma's dead, it's only a matter of time before it's just the two of us. And can we be honest? Uncle Jake's a few whiskey bottles shy from dead himself. He squatted down beside me and plucked some books from the shelf. It'd be nice not to burn every bridge in this family. Can't burn a bridge that never existed in the first place, can you? I stood up and walked to the boxes by the window, then tossed the books in carelessly, wanting to be done with this as soon as possible. The longer I spent here the more the memories threatened to come crawling back. Do you ever think about what happened? Eric asked, coming up from behind me and gently placing his books in the box. He frowned at my disorganized mess and began restacking them neatly. No. Really? Eric didn't sound convinced. I think about it almost every day. It was horrible. I didn't say anything. Instead, I walked back to the bookshelf and grabbed another armful of books, then stomped back to the box and dumped them in. Hey! Eric said. Listen, jackass, you could at least have a little courtesy. He gestured to the books he was arranging inside, neat and tidily with their spines facing upward. One of them was called Mysteries of the Cryptids. I looked away. See the effort I'm putting in? He said. Do you really need to chuck your shit everywhere? Sorry man, I just don't like this place. 
I shook my head, feeling a chill wash over me. I want to finish this and go. So do I, but don't you think talking could be good? Not really, no. I stalked toward the den. Time to put some space between me and this conversation. He grabbed my arm. Please, Matt. It was 12 years ago, but it feels like a lifetime. I don't even know if I'm remembering real events anymore or just inventing things in my head. I shrugged him off, but his expression was pleading. He needed this. You won't talk to me about it, he stammered. I have no fucking clue if what I remember even happened. With a sigh, I thunked down in my grandmother's rocking chair. It sat in front of her red brick fireplace, now filled with only the ghosts of old, charred logs. I idly thought to myself that it'd probably never be used again, because I planned on tearing this cabin down and leaving it for the insects. It would be better that way. I only wished I could tear down the memories with it. A week at this cabin had gifted me a decade of alcoholism, chronic depression and a side of insomnia. It took a cocktail of prescription meds just to get me to sleep these days, and when I did it was a coin toss whether or not I'd experience sleep paralysis. And now Eric wanted to dig those memories up. I flexed my right hand, staring at the thick scars that wound their way across it. Even now, all these years later I could still see the blood. Smell it. Taste it. My heart started racing just thinking about it, and I forced myself to look away. I focused on the hearth before me. And something caught my eye. What the hell? I muttered, leaning forward. It wasn't a log, it was something much smoother. The shape was all wrong though. I left the chair and knelt down, sifting through the ashes and burned timber, uncovering the curious object with mounting horror. I pulled it free, brushing away flakes of ash with my fingertips. My arm quivered. Eric. I said, pushing the word from my mouth. What's up? He called. I swallowed. Is. This Griff? Footsteps sounded from the other room and he came bounding in, face brimming with excitement. You found Griff? I didn't say anything. I stared at the skull in my hand, doing my best to hold back the floodgates of memories. My eyes found Eric's, and I held the skull aloft. What the fuck? He shouted, stumbling forward. He dropped to his knees, looking at the skull in terror. No way that's Griff. No fucking way. He shook his head furiously. What would he be doing in the damn fireplace, Matt? I didn't know what to say. I knew there was no reason he should have been in the fireplace. None. No dog would willingly let itself burn to death. Maybe it's a coyote, Eric reasoned, tripping over his words. Grandma probably killed it and chucked it in here so the scent wouldn't attract other animals and... There's no coyotes out here, you know that. I dropped the skull, and it cracked against the solid wood floor. A shudder ran through me. And it's way too small to be a wolf. Eric looked on the verge of tears. Griff was probably the only happy memory we had of this horrible place. Matt. Why would she do that? A thousand reasons crossed my mind. All of them beginning and ending with one night twelve years ago. I stood up from the fireplace, my feet feeling weak and my sense of balance waning. I fell back into the rocking chair, and it croaked a haunting welcome. Alright, I said quietly. I think it's time to talk about what happened when we were kids.